Hi everyone, welcome to Procedural Cave Generation episode 6. So today we're going to be looking at how to connect isolated rooms together with passages. Um, we'll be connecting them based on proximity, so a room will always be connected to the nearest possible room, just because this sort of looks the most natural. Um, so let's go into our map generator script, and let's scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to delete this uh, on -draw gizmos method, since I don't think we're going to be needing it again. And uh, instead, let's create a class called room, which is going to store all the information about our room. So uh, first of all, we'll want a public list of coordinates to store all the tiles in the room. Then uh, we're also going to want a list of all of the tiles that sort of form the edge of the room, um, because when we're sort of trying to find the shortest distance between two rooms, Rather than search through all of the tiles in the room, we can just limit that to just the sort of border tiles. So um, let's go public list of coordinates, edge tiles. And uh, we're also going to want a public list of rooms, which we'll call our connected rooms. And uh, just to be clear what I mean by connected, I mean two rooms that share a common passage so, for example, in this diagram, room A is connected to room B, but room A is not connected to room C, even though you can access the one from the other through room, uh, through room B. All right, let's also create a public int for the room size, which is uh, just how many tiles there are in the room. And let's go ahead and create a public constructor. So that's a public room. It will take in a list of coordinates for the room tiles. And we also want to pass in the 2D integer array that makes up the map um, so that we can detect which of the tiles are edge tiles. So to start off with, let's set tiles equal to room tiles and room size equal to the number of tiles in our tiles list and uh, we can set our connected rooms equal to a new empty list of rooms. And uh, we'll do the same for our edge tiles. Edge tiles equals new empty list of coordinates. And now we're going to want to go through all of the tiles in our room. So for each coord tile in the tiles list, we'll want to look at all of that uh, tiles neighbors and if any of the neighbors is a wall tile, we'll know that the tile we're currently looking at is on the edge of the room. So we'll do a for loop for int x equal to tile dot tile x minus one, x less than or equal to tile dot tile x plus one, x incrementing by one each time. And uh, same story for the y, just copy this, rename this variable to y, and tile.tilex, of course, becomes uh, tile.tileY in both of these cases. And uh, we want to say if x is equal to tile.tilex or y is equal to tile.tileY, which just means that we're excluding the um, diagonal neighbors. So we're only looking at the four neighbors that sort of form a cross around the tile. Um, then if map x, y is a wall tile, then we'll add the current tile to the edge tiles list with edge tiles dot add tile. Okay, so now we've got a list of all of our edge tiles. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is to uh, create a public static void called connect rooms. This will just take in two rooms, a room A and a room B. And we just want to add um, room B to room A's list of connected rooms and vice versa. So room A dot connected rooms dot add room B, room B dot connected rooms dot add room A. All right, and let's also create a little public bool um, is connected, which takes in a room, which you can just call the other room. 
and it will return whether or not connected rooms contains the other room. All right, now while we're here, let's also create a, another constructor, public room, which takes in no variables. Um, so this is just our empty constructor in case we want to set the room just equal to an empty room. All right, and with that set up, let us go to our process map method. And uh, in this block of code here, we're removing all of the rooms from our map which are less than the room threshold size. So um, let's create a list of rooms for all the rooms which survive this sort of culling process. We can call these the surviving rooms. It's equal just to a new list of rooms. So we're saying if the room size is less than the room threshold size, then remove it. Otherwise, we want to add it to our list of surviving rooms. So surviving rooms dot add. Um, we need to create a new room. We want to pass in the tiles of the room, which is the room region we defined over here. And of course, we also want to pass in the map. All right, next, let's create a method, um, which we can call something like connect closest rooms. This will take in a list of rooms, which we can call all rooms. And at the end of our process map method, we'll call connect closest rooms and pass in our list of surviving rooms. All right, so in here, we are going to want to go through all of the rooms. So let's do a little for each room. We can call it room A in all the rooms. And we want to compare room A to every other room to um, find the closest one. So we'll loop through all the rooms again. For each room, room B in all rooms, we'll now look at the distance between uh, all of the tiles in room A and all of the tiles in room B, or all of the edge tiles, obviously. Um, so let's do a little for loop. For int, uh, let's call this tile index A, is equal to zero tile index a less than room a dot edge tiles dot count tile index a plus plus and let's just copy this we're going to need to do one for tile index b this is less than room b dot edge tiles dot count and let's just create a coordinate um, tile a is equal to room a dot edge tiles with an index of tile index a and coord tile b is equal to room b dot edge tiles with an index of uh, tile index b. So let's create an integer called distance between rooms and uh, we're now going to use our distance formula to find the distance between tile A and tile B, except uh, we're not going to square root the result because um, we don't need to know the actual distance. We just need to be able to compare distances to see which is the lowest distance. So we'll cut out the relatively expensive square root operation and just say tile A dot X minus tile B dot X. And we want to square that. So... Uh, We'll say mathf dot power, and we'll raise it to the power two, and we'll add the same thing except with tile y. And uh, since mathf dot power uh, returns a float, we'll just want to cast all of this to an integer. All right, so we've got the distance between the rooms, but we want to really keep track of what the best distance between the rooms is. So up here, let's create a integer best distance, it can be equal to zero by default. And uh, of course, we're also going to want to know um, which tiles resulted in this best distance. 
So we can say coord best tile A is equal to a empty coord, and coord best tile B is equal to a new coord. Um, we also want to know which rooms these tiles come from. So room best room A is equal to a new empty room, which is uh, why we made that empty constructor. And room best room B is also equal to a new room. All right, and finally, we just want a bool to say whether or not we have yet found a possible connection. So we'll call this possible connection found. And by default, that's equal to false. OK, so once we've calculated the distance between the rooms, what we want to do is we want to say if the distance between the rooms is less than the best distance, in other words, we've uh, found a new best connection, but also if we have not yet found a possible connection, so first of all, best distance is now equal to the distance between the rooms. Um, we have now found a possible connection, so we can set this equal to true. And we just want to go through best tile A is equal to tile A. Um, best tile B is equal to tile B. And the same thing with the rooms. Best room A is going to be equal to room A. And best room B is equal to room B. OK. Once we've found the best connection, um, it's going to move on to the next uh, to the next room to find a connection for. So we'll just want to reset possible connection found equal to false, um, so that we can move on to the next room. Um, inside here, uh, of course, at some point room A is going to be equal to room B, and we don't want to try find a connection between the same room. So we can say if room A is equal to room B, then we can simply continue, uh, meaning we just skip ahead to the next room B. Um, another case could be that room A is actually connected to room B. And in this case, since room A already has a connection, we'll just break, which means we skip all of this and go to the next room A. All right, so once we've finished this, this for each loop um, over here, and we've now found our, our connection between room A and room B, we actually need to do something with that information. So we'll say if a possible connection was found, then uh, let's call a new method we're going to create called create passage. And this method is going to want to know the two rooms, room A and room B that are being connected, as well as, of course, the tiles, um, tile A and tile B that are being connected. All right, so if possible connection found, then create passage. Um, we want to pass in, of course, the best room A, the best room B, the best tile A, and finally the best tile B. All right, so in our create passage, the first thing we want to do is we'll want to tell room A and room B that they're now connected to one another. So we use our room.connectRooms, and we pass in room A, and we pass in room B. And for now, let's just draw a little debug line between tile A and tile B so we can visualize the passage. Um, to do that, we're going to need a method that converts a coordinate um, into an actual world position. So let's create a method that returns a vector 3 called uh, coord to world point. Of course, this takes in a coord, which we can call tile. And we'll return a new vector 3. For the x value, we want to go to the far left of the map, so that would be negative width over 2 plus a half. And then we want to add our tiles tile x value. For the y axis, we can just say 2 to have it sort of raise itself uh, above the ground. And for the z axis, that will be negative height over 2 plus a half plus the tiles tile y. All right, so now 
I can say debug dot draw line from code to world point of tile A to code to world point of tile B. And let's give it a color, something like color dot green perhaps. And we can just make it last for 100 seconds. All right, now one thing that I've forgotten to do um, is over here when we say if room A is connected to room B, then uh, we don't actually want to make any connection, any passageway from room A, um, since it already has one. So at the moment, when we break, it goes out of this for each loop. But um, if, if we've already found a possible connection, it's just going to create a passage anyway um, between the best thing it's found so far. So before we break, we want to say possible connection found is equal to false so that it does not create the passageway. All right, so now let's go into Unity and on the map generator, let's set our random full percent up to something like 53. So we're sure to get a bunch of isolated rooms and let's press play. Now, as you can see, we do have nice connections between the closest rooms, so that's working. However, you might have noticed one rather substantial problem. The entire left side of our cavern is isolated from the right side. And this can happen because the only rule that we have in place is that a room must be connected to another room. There's nothing saying that they must all in some way be connected to one another. So in the next video, along with actually forming these passageways that we're just uh, representing as debug lines at the moment, we're going to be looking at how to do a second iteration to actually force all the rooms now to be interconnected so that there's no portion of the map that is not accessible from another. But that is everything for this episode, so I hope you had fun. And uh, if you have any questions, feedback, requests, leave a comment. And uh, until next video, cheers.